Okay. So, talking about account, which has been defined as the summary of all transactions relating to the same activity. Let's look at how an account looks like. When you open a ledger, the, a page of the ledger is divided into two halves. So, let's take this as a page of a ledger. And it is divided into two halves. The left hand side and the right hand side. Okay? Then because we write the name of the account on top, let's cross it. So, we sometimes refer to this as the T account. The left hand side is referred to as debit side and the right hand side is referred to as the credit side so you can see debit side credit side okay now the name of the account is written here you remember we talked about such accounts as Kwame's account, ABC account. We've talked about um, account, purchases account, uh, sales account, rent account, fixed asset account, such as motor van account, machinery account, um, land and building account. Okay, so the name of the account is written here. So we can have, you see, title of account. So the name of the account is written here. Note, this credit and debit is just used to explain something to you. Then when you come into the account proper, we have the date. narration and we have a value we also have at the credit side the same thing is repeated here okay and narration and we have the value here now um, usually you may not write the narration as we are fitting it here. But let me explain that the date refers to the, um, the date that the transaction occurred. Okay, so record it here, the date. Then we, the narration refers to the account. I explained that the double entry principle states that we debit one account and credit one account. We said that recording is done twice. Debit one account, credit another account. So to every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. So if you record debit entry here, you must record credit entry in another account. So the account that is receiving the credit entry will be recorded, will be written here, the name or the title of that account is recorded here. Then this value refers to the, the amount of money involved, cash, okay, monetary value involved, it is written here. So because we are talking about value, it means we will have to bring the currency sign here. Okay, then when we come to credit side, we do the same thing. Where the particular account is credited, you write the name of the corresponding account which will be debited. So if we have cash account here, you are not expected to write cash here. 
Okay. Or cash here. It could be the other account. There are exceptions, especially with cash book. There are exceptions. But primarily, for example, if you have motor vehicle as a title of an account, you are not expected to see motor vehicle in the narration column. We don't write that. Or you write motor vehicle here. No, you don't write that. Or if you are talking about capital account, we shouldn't see capital account in the capital account. Don't write capital in the capital account. What did the owner introduce into the business? If it is motor vehicle, you write motor vehicle. Then when you go to the other account, it will be motor vehicle account. Then you go and debit it. If it is cash the owner introduced into the business, you write cash. So we don't write the account title here and the same title is written, it's not written here. You don't write it here. You don't write it in the account at all. Okay? Do not be confused. It is very simple. Just follow it and you get it correct. Okay. So this is how an account looks like. So, if you record anything here, at the debit side, we say we have made a debit entry. And if we record anything here at the credit side, we say we have made credit entry. So, when we say debit, it means write the transaction here. And when we say credit, we say write the transaction here. That is the debit and credit. So, this is how an account looks like. You call it T account. Debit side, credit side. The date of the transaction, then the corresponding account and the value involved, amount of money involved. Okay? Then the same thing here. Record it here. Okay, so having seen how an account looks like and what is done in an account, let me emphasize that this account is found in what? Ledger. So if you open any of the ledgers, you should see account in there. All right, good. So let's now go ahead and look at the classes of account. So, classification of account. Accounts are classified into two. Okay? One. Personal account. And two is impersonal account. Okay? So, you remember we did ledgers right now and we said that the sales ledger, okay, keeps account of persons we have sold goods to but have not paid us our money. Okay? So, the, those persons the account in the sales ledger falls um, fall under personal account. Okay, so all accounts bearing names of persons in the sales ledger will fall under personal account. Okay, and then also all accounts that are found in the purchases ledger also falls under the personal account. Let me make it very um, simple for us. So, 
account in sales ledger and also account in purchases ledger. Then account in private ledger. Okay. Those these three accounts, uh, these three um, books record personal accounts. So all the accounts in these three books are personal account. Note this very well. Okay. And then the two which I wrote earlier is impersonal account. With the impersonal account um Records of the general ledger are recorded in the impersonal account. And the impersonal account, here, we are saying that they are referring to those accounts that are not relating to personal account. So, impersonal account refers to those accounts which do not relate to personal account. So any personal account will fall under the personal account. Any account bearing names of persons, okay, including capital account, will fall under the personal account. Now, the impersonal account is grouped into two. And so I, we have the real account. The real account here talks about tangible and some intangible assets. Okay, so for example, when we talk about real account, we'll be talking about the fixed asset, land and building, um, plant and machinery, motor vehicle. All of these accounts are referred to as what? Real account. Then we can talk about patent. Okay, we, we have said that patent refers to exclusive right to use a, a brand, a name, or anything. Okay, it is worth something, and it also falls under real account. Then goodwill will fall under real account. So for real account, we can also talk about stock. Okay, the goods we have will also fall under real account. So here we can talk about um, fixed assets, okay, such as those I just mentioned. All of these will fall under the real account. And then we can also talk about some current assets like um, stock, okay. This will also fall under the real account. Then some intangible fixed asset. Fixed asset here referring to both tangible and intangible fixed asset. They all fall under the real account. The next um, one is nominal account. So, in the nominal account, we record income and expenses. Income and expenses are recorded in the nominal account. So, if you see sales account is um, income and expenses fall under nominal account. Okay, income and expenses falls under nominal account. So, under nominal account, we talk about income such as sales account, 
We may talk about the purchases account. We may talk about rent account. We may also talk about income from investment and so on and so forth. Okay, so the nominal account will take care of income and expenses. The real account will take care of um, tangible and some intangible um, fixed assets and some um, current assets like stock as we have written here. Okay. Now, let's look at how the double entry principle works in relation to the classes of account we have. Okay. So that it will be easier for us to um, identify and draw up account when we come across transactions. Okay, we should, we should be able to easily um, identify the two accounts involved when transaction is given to us. Okay, so let's, we know how an account looks like. Let's now um, clean this side. and um, look at how the recording is done for the various classes of accounts we have here. So first, we want to take the, the cash book, okay? If the transactions are about cash, um, payment or receipt of cash, how do we record it in the account? So, we say So let's write rules for debit and credit. Rules for debit and credit. So that is what accounting is so much about. The rules that, is, that are used for debiting and crediting account. So as I said, we start with cash um, transactions. So in the cash book, when we receive cash, we debit it, okay? So we debit the cash book when cash is received. So we write debit or receipt credit or payment credit or payment okay So when we receive cash, we debit it. And when we pay cash, we credit the cash account. OK. The next one is um, personal account. OK. Let's now come here and look at the personal account. For this purpose, we treated cash book separately. So let's look at the personal account here. So two, if it's about personal account, we debit the receiver and we credit the giver, okay? So, for example, we were talking about, let's say, Kwame's account. When Kwame buys goods from us, we have given the goods to Kwame. So Kwame is receiving the goods. So we debit Kwame's account. 
Then, we are selling goods, sales. We are selling goods. Our goods are going out. We are giving it to Kwame. So we credit sales account. So debit the receiver. Kwame is receiving. And credit the giver who is giving the sales. We are giving goods out. Okay. So if it's about personal account, um, this is how we go about it. Okay. Then let's look at in the real account. So, um, the real account here, with regards to asset, fixed asset, or stock, and so on and so forth. When we receive, let's say, motor vehicle, okay, we have to debit all incoming vehicles into the vehicle's account. When we buy motor vehicle, our motor vehicles are going to increase. So, we debit the motor vehicle account. Okay, so we say debit all incoming tangible assets. So incoming tangible asset, we um, debit it. Okay, so all incoming tangible asset, we debit that account. Motor vehicle, I've mentioned. We can talk about equipment, account, fixtures and fitting account. Whenever we buy them, we debit it. And whenever they leave us or we sell them, maybe we are, we are not into buying and selling of cars, but we can sell a motor vehicle we have used for a while to somebody. And so when we sell it, our motor vehicles will reduce. And so we have to credit it. And so we say that credit all out going tangible assets, okay, or items. Mm -hmm or outgoing tangible assets or items. So the basic thing is also that you would have to debit um, increase in asset and credit decrease in asset. So we can also say or debit increase in asset and credit decrease in asset. So when we receive an asset is going to be increased, like the motor vehicle I talk about, increase motor vehicle, you debit it. And when motor vehicle goes out of the business, we sell it, we dispose it, whatever, our motor vehicle in the business will reduce, you credit that account and that is how we go about it in the um, real account okay let me clean this side uh, so for nominal account which talks about income and expenses okay we debit expenses and we credit all income. That is what we do, basically, okay? So with the nominal account, we say debit all expenses and credit all income. So whenever the transaction is about income, so far as it is income, you must credit it. So income like sales account, we credit it. Expenses like purchases, we debit it. And that is how um, we go about it. Okay. And then we also 
debit, what we refer to as losses, and we credit what we refer to as gains. Okay, so um, income is grouped into two. We have revenue and gains. And expenses are also grouped into two. We have expenses and losses. So that is how we go about it as far as the double entry uh, bookkeeping is concerned. What we have looked at is the theory aspect, okay? We must um, bring it into life, the practically, for us to see how it plays out, okay, in the various account. So, let us now um, look at the double entry recordings for um, assets, um, liabilities, and capital.